of the Open Net Podcast. The only Open Net you can't miss. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. No. That's right. No. Okay. I, mean, okay. I, okay. I, I might still fine. miss it every once fine. in a while. Fine. No. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're gonna we're gonna let that one drop. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I am today's host, an odd fellow, also known as Odd Fellow. Joining me today, we have the lovely Schnoz How's and going? Notorious Wizard. Notorious Wizard. Notorious Unknown. <laughs> <laughs> How's not a wizard right? anymore. <laughs> no, not a wizard anymore. Not as of uh, Monday. So, how are you guys doing this week? Pretty good. I can't complain. I actually just got eligible maybe 30 minutes or so. So, hey, we love to see that. Yes, we do. Yeah, I'm so upset. I'm, I'm not a wizard anymore. Love my boys. Love you all over there at the Wizards. <laughs> Hope to see you back soon. But, uh, you know, just grinding on. New week, new times, new people to play against. So, getting some more scrims in, looking for a new team, you know, and how it goes. So, we've got a relatively. Um, I wouldn't say uneventful week, but we don't have like a major topic or anything uh, like we've had in previous weeks. Uh, last week, obviously talking about, you know, the ELO and all that. Having not talked about the Sprocket thing a couple weeks ago. This week, we're just talking MLE and MLE things in general. And we're going to be starting off with a little bit of a recap slash review of week four. Uh, we're going to go in order by leagues. Uh, so notorious, why don't you, since you are the newest FL person here, talk to us about how FL did this week. All right. Yeah. I picked out two of the series that, uh, when I was looking through them, interested me looking at them. The first one I got picked out here is the rhinos versus tyrants in twos and threes. Now it started out rhinos, tyrants and twos. The Rhinos 5 0 them. Got them good. It was good high scoring games. You have Panos coming out with a 12 goals, 5.24 MVPR. Only one coming out with a 5.03 for the Rhinos with nine goals. And the Tyrants getting just over three each. But then you get back to their next series. And let me get this pulled up here. Sorry, y'all. Give me just a second. Their next series. The Tyrants came back and 3 to the Rhinos, actually. So a good little comeback, good little fight back from them in threes. And here you saw some different players playing, but in average, all around the board for the Tyrants, they're sitting in that high two MVPR range, scoring less than 10 goals each, but you got four, seven, and four. So a good, solid team effort going on there to come back and get the win. The Rhinos... They had a little bit of a heavy score on their team. Dark getting eight goals with the 3.66. Matt, maybe he was having an off day, not able to keep up much, but it kept him from getting double five owed. And then the other one I wanted to talk about is Eclipse. They double four one the Jets. So a wonderful show out from them this week. It was wonderful to see the Eclipse coming out. I've played with some of those guys. Love seeing them play. So it's good to see him get the double four one. Yeah, uh, you know, you always love seeing even in FL, you know, these fight backs from teams and, you know, when teams are able to consistently have good victories uh, across both uh, both sets, you know, between twos, uh, between twos and threes. So. Uh, definitely, you know, big shout outs to the FL teams that we talked about this week, just cause we're not talking about your team this week, by the way, doesn't mean that you didn't do anything cool. Um, it's just, we can only talk about like two games per league, uh, each. So it, we, we have to kind of bounce around a little bit. So moving right along, uh, I will be going ahead and covering AL and I promise I'm not biased with this, but I am going to talk about the threes matchup between the tyrants and the rhinos. The reason that I'm not biased is because I didn't play in it. Uh, even though I am on uh, the Tyrants. But the main reason that I'm bringing it up is not because it was a 4-1 of the Tyrants over the Rhinos. Uh, it's because this victory in threes gives the Tyrants uh, first place in threes uh, in ACAD by a fairly dis uh, by a fairly decent margin. Uh, I believe I, I was trying to find the, the uh, stats and the actual, um, the actual standings on the season. I think there's one team that's like, right behind us um but it's it, this threes win uh this win being 4-1 definitely uh really helped solidify 
uh, Tyrants being first place uh, in all of ACAD. Uh, so that is definitely, you know, big dubs, not just for me being on the team, but just for everybody else on on the Tyrants. You know, when, when you're able to kind of solidify that at this point in the season, um, you know, as long as you don't start backtracking during the later part of the season, that's always a good thing. Uh, the next match that I did want to talk about was, I need to refine it here, it was the Shadow and the Spectre in AL. Uh, and the main reason that I wanted to talk about that, uh, was just because it was a very solid, uh, five Oh, uh, and this is the twos matchup. So it was a, just a solid five Oh victory for the shadow over the specter. Uh, you had B and poop fish against, uh, on the shadow versus Wayne Finkel and specter, Wayne Finkel and specter, Wayne Finkel and sniper 50 on the specter. Um, you know, it's just all around solid victory for the shadow. You know, it's it. You like pointing these things out because every time you can get a five zero is always a good thing, uh, because that's obviously more wins that you get that work towards your, uh, towards your playoff points. So, uh, that's just our quick two game recap for ACAD. So now we are going to move right along to CL. So for CL, uh, first game we picked out actually was the Outlaws five owing the Dodgers in threes. Uh, the Outlaws converted 19 goals on 50 shots, which is putting 50 shots on that is absolutely insane, especially in a three series. Uh, Dodgers put two goals on their 10 shots. And, you know, just kind of looking at the, the score split, I don't think there was a single game uh, where the score differential was more than, I'm sorry, was less than two goals. So all five games, Outlaws were winning by two goals or more. Four of those five, they were winning by three or more. Uh, moving on to the next game for CO, we've got the Hurricanes 4 one the Knights in twos. Hurricanes put 28 shots on 61 attempts. I'm sorry. Yes, 28 goals on 61 attempts. Only put up an 8.11 MVPR. Oh. PJG with a 6.24, which is absolutely insane for twos. Uh, the Rogers put up a 4.38 and Sedusa with a 2.73, which also isn't bad. But compared to an 8.11 and a 6.24, it's it's kind of hard to compare. Uh, goal differential for each game is four or more uh, for four to the five games. Uh, some of them went to 7-1, some went to 7-3. So it kind of seemed like the Hurricanes really had that one in their court, and they really handled it pretty well. Uh, moving on to ML, which I believe I'm also doing. Yes. The Eclipse 4 won the Jets in twos. What's he on? Put 19 goals on 32 shots with a 7.22 MVPR, which is insane. Oof. 19 goals for one player in a five game series is it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's uh, what, what's what's the math on that? That's like almost four goals a game, which is yeah. it, it, consistently getting almost four goals a game in one series is at that rank. It, that's it's almost astronomical. Not hard <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, moving on, the second game of ML, Wizards 5 0 the Sharks in threes. Not biased at all whatsoever, I promise. <laughs> um, all the games were pretty close. Goal differential of one in four out of the five games. Sharks had 21 saves to the Wizards 17. So it just kind of sounded like a pretty sweaty series. Both teams really doing their all to really just try and have as much fun as possible and keep it really close. Excellent. Well, that will move us right along to the highest league in the land, which is going to be our Premier League matchup. So the first one that I want to talk about, just going to quickly go over this, is going to be uh, Hive 4-1 uh, over the Spartans in threes. Main reason I'm talking about this is because we spent um, a good amount of time last week talking about uh, the good position that the Hive had themselves in in PL. Uh, this is just another way that they're kind of, you know, hammering that home. Uh, Algix going off with a 3.78 MVPR, seven goals, eight saves, 19 shots. You know, you really can't ask for more than that from, you know, arguably one of the better players in PL. Um, moving on to the second game. Now, this is the one that I think is going to be interesting. So for the second game that I'm going to talk about is actually going to be the Pirates in the Shadow. And the Pirates win 4-1 over the Shadow. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because the Shadow fielded Beast at a 19 cell and Jordan at a 19-5 cell. The Pirates fielded Speedy at an 18-5 and Sadic Cat at an 18. Mm. Which, to me, the fact that we've got that kind of salary difference in PL 
and it's the lower salaries that are coming away with the four to one victory. And it was, and it, and it really wasn't close, you know, like there was game five was the closest victory for the pirates being five to four uh, games, one, three, and four were all won by two or three with a two or three goal cushion. Uh, so it, it really was a, a fairly dominant performance there uh, by the pirates and in PL, when you get to see, you know, these 18 and 18 and a half sales come up and really smack around a 19 and 19 five, that's always going to be entertaining in my book. I yeah, agree for sure. So with that, that is going to move us right along into some of the more meat potatoes, uh, which is we're going into a bye week. Uh, for those of you who maybe are not paying attention or live under a rock or just, you know, only know what's happening in MLE based on this podcast, uh, there's a bye week this week. So it's Labor Day in the United States. We're not playing any games this week. Um, so there's not much happening. Uh, however, we do still see roster changes happening. So, I'm going to leave this mostly for Schnoz and Notorious, and I will throw in some input as needed. Are there any changes that haven't happened that you guys think may happen in your respective leagues? You know, are there teams that, oh, may need to, you know, make a change? Or is there this guy that's been a free agent for a while that, oh, maybe he needs to get picked up now? Because a bye week is a really great time for all these changes to happen. Yeah. I mean, personally, I've, been looking at the roster for the FL a lot, obviously with just coming down into FL mm -hmm. and I see a lot of teams that have open salary. That's not being used. And we have in total across the league, 32 new waiver wires this week. So I'm out wondering if by the end of tomorrow, we don't see some pickups that way they have some time to get that chemistry rolling with their teams, get it going. And that's not just an FL that's across all of the leagues there is salary cap open out there all the way around so i'm wondering with all of these rank outs that happen this week what's gonna happen coming up by the end of tomorrow who's gonna get picked up on waivers who's gonna get picked up over the weekend in tryouts that are fas and i mean just one i can say here in fl one guy i've played a good bit of scrims with so far great player i expect to see fb silver gaming get picked up pretty quick he's a 6-5 sal a lot of teams have the room for him he's a great player in my opinion he could easily get up to al this season great great player great mechanics and i'm really looking forward to see where he goes in this league that's that's a pretty great take notorious because you know i've seen fp stover play a few times before he's definitely probably one of the better bang for your buck players out there in fl for sure yeah, and and my my little take on that is when you're telling me that there's a player that's a six five that needs to be picked up in FL, that tells me a lot because that that salary is is one of those ones that really can just slide under the radar because it's so hit or miss as to whether a player at that salary is going to actually be able to perform or not. Um, and so when you have a guy that's starting at that sal that you can pick up right now with all your open cap space and then not worry about it as he starts to improve and get better. Cause it happens fast in AL or excuse me, in FL. Um, I, I definitely think that, that if there's a, a good six, five that needs to be picked up, then teams should definitely be looking that at that as we head into, uh, the bye week uh, what about you, Schnaz? You got anything that you're thinking might happen or anything you're excited to potentially see or, you know, any thoughts or concerns going into the bye week? I I just want everyone to enjoy the time with their families, honestly. But in terms of MLE, uh, listen, Pirates are sitting at 16 and four in doubles. Second behind them is 13 and seven shadow. Something Something's got to change. Someone's got to take over that crown. Someone's got to take that first place seed from the Pirates and twos. Maybe, maybe someone will rank out. Maybe they'll drop someone. We'll see. But that someone needs to really try to step up and get that first place seed off of them. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. So as we go ahead and move things along just a little bit, uh, roster changes. So roster changes have happened. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things that occur, you know, the first two days of the week, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, was there anything that you guys have seen 
that was unexpected? You know, did somebody get dropped that you didn't expect to see dropped? Did somebody get ranked out? <clears throat> Notorious. Uh, that you didn't expect <laughs> to see ranked out anything like that as we uh as as we start getting ready to go into this no well, notorious gonna... do you want to do you want to mention it or should yeah, i yeah yeah um let's just go there if you're gonna drop my name in it uh yeah i got bumped down to fl was not expecting that we've been playing well you know it just it happens it is what it is but not only did i get bumped out four wizards players got bumped out of their leagues so it has definitely thrown a wrench in us but the wizards we had the extra players we i know of one of the guys that was able to be retained i sadly was not as the wizards are do not have an fl team but vital sign my other acad buddy that got bumped up to cl I thought it was going to happen. He's an amazing player. Glad to see he was able to stay with the Wizards. Nuttiest flicks I've ever seen, but was not expecting four Wizards players to get hit on the same day at the same time. It's it's rather unfortunate seeing our, you know, almost half of our team kind of dissipate. You know, I've, we we build up this brothership in the Wizards server. It's it's a big thing for us where we have yeah. we're all very close friends. We're all we all like to make jokes with each other. We do in houses constantly. So, you know, seeing four of our close friends getting dropped is it's it's a real big hit to us. We won't really have those same in houses anymore without those guys. Well, and see, that's that's kind of one of those things that, that I enjoy about, you know, the way that Emily works is because it's always going to be a community. Right. You know, so even though there's maybe not guys on the team uh there's nothing saying that you can't, you know, bring them back at some point in the week and be like, hey, let's just do, you know, random in houses just for fun and still kind of, you know, have that, you know, like, hey, remember when we were doing this as a team and just and just still kind of build that. And there's nothing saying that you guys won't continue or that you guys may not end up back on the same team, you know, at some point in the future. Um, so that's just kind of one of the it's, it's, it's one of the downsides with the way that the salaries and everything work. But that's how sports works. You know, like you get. You get people on your team that you like and that you're friends with, and unfortunately, sometimes things just don't work out uh, the way that you want them to. But um, you know, it's 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 one of those things that it, it, it happens a lot, and especially with the rank downs, right? Like we talked about it last week with the way the the uh, LO team was trying to get FL to kind of have a little bit more meat to it, um, where they're actually having the forced rank downs instead of the required rank or instead of the um, rank down requests and all that kind of thing. So there's going to be a lot more people in that lower end of ACAD that find themselves getting dropped down to FL um, uh, as the season kind of goes on, just so we can make sure that we're getting, you know, a good amount of people in FL because there's so much improvement that happens in foundation league, right? Like it, it, it doesn't take much, hard learning to be able to learn what you need to, to improve from foundation lead to go up to a cad. So you're going to see a lot more people coming up, but not as many going down. So that's where all those force rank downs um, are coming from. Um, I mean, have, have there been any teams that you guys have noticed across uh, both uh, any of the leagues really that have done anything, you know, shocking to you since the draft or has everything played out pretty much, you know, the way that it seemed like it would. I got to say that I haven't noticed anything too shocking. I think the most, the thing that caught me the most off guard was the Wizards retaining four CL players mm. and not having a draft pick this season. Mm. Uh, we were actually all AL rank ups from last season, all really close friends. We were able to retain four of our players, being myself, Cat, Jonesy, and Trouble. And, you know, we're having a pretty decent run this season, so I can't really complain about it. For yeah. Me, and, and, I, uh, and, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, ahead there. And for me, I've uh, from I just joined right before the draft, so I'm fairly new to MLE myself. But from learning some of the players and talking to some of them, and then seeing draft and where it's ended up, I've seen a lot of draft picks not stick with those teams. So a lot of those draft picks went to waste in a way. I've seen a lot of them either just drop out to free agency or get traded off. So I'm wondering how much research did these teams do on players and talk to them before the draft? Cause I have not seen a lot of them stick with their teams and whether that be from rank outs, rank downs from just not having a good vibe. 
a lot of the draft picks did not work out from what I've seen. What league was that again? That or was you just across that in the leagues. Across, the, across leagues. the leagues. I've seen, uh, I mean, uh, obviously a lot less as you get higher, but mm-hmm. from the bottom up, it was amazing to see the amount of draft picks that just didn't stick with that team or haven't been much of a factor. You haven't seen them play much. So I'm wondering what's kind of going on there throughout the teams. So as someone who has a little bit of experience in a captain role, I, for those who may not know, I was the Bulls captain for about three seconds at the beginning of <laughs> uh, last season uh, for ACAD. There's a lot that goes into making a draft pick, right? You got to do the tryouts. You got to look at yep. the scrim stats. Um, there's a factor of taking current players that you have. Like if you have a retention, you know, taking who they might want to play with into account um, and all that kind of thing. And sometimes it can come to you draft somebody that on paper looks really good or during the tryout with a bunch of random people, which kind of is the same as like doing a scrim looks really good. And then you get them into this team setting with the guys that you have. Um, and this is why I think that private tryouts are a lot better than just doing these big mass paying tryouts. Um, if you have, you know, people on your team retained or already have dudes that you know are going to be playing, if you can do it, um, it's try these guys out with your current roster and see how they actually mesh with who you have. Cause chemistry is 90% of the battle. In my opinion, like you can have a guy who has the best scrim stats you've ever seen has fantastic goals per game, you know, a ton of shots put on knows how to triple musty flip reset, all that kind of stupid stuff. But when you get it into a game and he's playing with the guys that you have on your team and the rotations are not great or he's not receiving passes properly because his positioning isn't good compared to how your team is playing. That's where you can run into issues. It's those little small things that a guy could be good, could have good rotations in general, but there does get a point where you have to learn to adapt and you have to learn to be able to adjust those good rotations into good rotations for your team. You know, like everyone talks about like how, Oh, you just need to have good rotations and decent mechanics. And you could be good at rocket league. That's fine and dandy for rent when you're playing against random people that you'll probably never play with again. And all this other kind of thing, when you're playing with the same team in and out every week and you know, you're doing practices and in houses and all this other kind of stuff. It's the adaptation. It's 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 being able to evolve. It's being able to change how you play based on the needs of your team that really makes a good player. And I think that is where we run into a lot of this, you know, these guys getting drafted and then getting dropped or these quick rank outs and all that kind of thing. Now, the rank outs are, are a different story. You know, like that's that's something that you kind of that's a risk you take when you when you draft somebody as yeah. a high salary. But it's it's the it, it, that's one of those things that's hard to see in a tryout or in a scrim is how can this player really adapt and really evolve um, their play style based on who they're playing with. That's why when you get guys that in, when you're looking at scrim stats, if you see somebody that is like consistently average, but he's consistently average with everybody that he's playing with, which is a mix of players and a mix of salaries and all that kind of thing. That's something to kind of keep an eye on. Cause that means that they, may have a pretty good, you know, ability to adapt. But it's also the players that if you see them playing with the same three or four guys every couple of weeks and they have that same good performance with the same guys, you know that once they get in and mesh with somebody, that's when they're solid. So you have to kind of figure out which which players are good and which which players are good players and which players are good teammates. And I think that's really kind of the the fine line that you have to balance. You know, adding adding on to that, it's it's a lot more than just scrim stats and how good your mechanics are. Your personality comes into play. You have to Mm -hmm. take into account how well play styles fit together. You could, you could have the most mechanical player, as you said, odd fellow, but if they're, you know, toxic, if they're not showing up for stuff like replay reviews or in houses or scrims or whatever, it's, it's going to be more of a knife in your back and it's, it's going to be a real hindrance to your team and being able to progress to the next level. 
Yeah, nobody wants to want to be shining star on their team who doesn't want to play as a team. He could be an amazing player, but if you if you're not willing to put in the effort with everyone else and help everyone else vibe together, get the games going. Yeah, you could 5-0 everybody, but can you do it by yourself? No. So that's definitely something I know a lot of teams are trying to take into account, and I'm seeing a lot more of it as teams running more small tryouts where they can get their team members in there and just do one or two guys at a time and try them out, get the feel with the other guys on the team, and give everybody kind of an input to it. And this kind of goes back to an analogy that I make a lot when I'm talking about Rocket League, which is um, when you're looking at sports in general, um, uh, one of the things that people you know, tend to kind of lean on for a sport like basketball is how in basketball, one player really kind of can have a massive impact on the team and the team really kind of comes down to just the one guy. Rocket League isn't really like that. You know, like you can have guys that stand out that have standout plays that stand out in performance and all that kind of thing. And like, Oh my God, he hit this really cool shot that one time. But how many times does him hitting that one shot actually result in movement for your team up the leaderboards, right? Like rocket league truly is a team sport. That's why everyone makes a big deal about all these roster moves that happen in RLCS because it's these guys that have been playing for so long and have played with each other that when they do change from one team to another, it's a huge deal because it's changing a whole dynamic you know, on the team that they're leaving and on the team that they're going to. It's the same thing in MLE, right? Like, it, it, there's a lot more movement in MLE. Like, people don't stay around in the, with each other as long as, you know, like in RLCS or in professional sports or something like that. But it's that same kind of thing, right? Um, so it really kind of comes down to, like like you guys were saying, your, how, you, how, you, how you can adapt your toxicity level, you know, because – there's a point where having a little bit of fire in you is nice, but not to the point where you're actively being a, you know, rude person to your teammates or yeah. you being the way that you are causes your teammates to kind of be like, eh, I don't really like playing with this guy, you know, and, and that can really throw off a whole thing. So that's why even though somebody can be performing very well, a whole team can be suffering because it's those little things, you know, yeah, everyone has a teammate that's driven to win but mm -hmm. not one that's driven so hard that they just become rude and toxic. Everybody wants the guy that's going to be there, support their team, be driven, no matter if it's a win or a loss, they're there saying, hey, we got this, guys. We just train harder. We come back harder. And that's no matter whether they win or lose. They Everybody wants that guy on their team who's there saying, hey, it doesn't matter. The, the game's not over. The season's not done. Every week we have stuff to improve on. Every week we all have our faults that we can go back and look at and we can get better at. Everybody wants that, but you don't want that guy on your team who's saying, hey, yeah, y'all need to go fix this. I'm just going to play around with my buddies. I don't have anything I need to work on. So that's the big thing that I really look for in teammates too is I want to play with people that are all motivated to fix their mistakes we all have mistakes we make it doesn't matter what level you're at so it's really good to find people that are like that and i loved having that at the wizards i'm gonna miss you guys hoping we're gonna miss you to more maybe get back soon but <laughs> you never know it was great there they had a wonderful dynamic love all the guys there you know it it just leagues happen how they happen and it's for the health of the league that's another thing i'm not i'm not mad I'm not upset i mean yeah i wish i could have just stayed but it's for the health of the league and that's what matters the most i could get really tilted over it and get upset yeah i got moved down but how can i help out my next team that's where i'm taking this for and that's that's something you actually did a great job with on the wizards you you were one of the most consistent with asking for in-house is always being at scrims replay replay reviews you always had this phenomenal mentality where even if we're down 6-1 and there's 10 seconds left, let's still try it. That's something I've always really admired about you, Notorious. You, I appreciate you it. have this never give up attitude. Yeah, how can you? I mean, it's Rocket League. We're all here to have fun, right? That's right. Every every single one of us, Ajnaz, we're all here to have fun, 
play video games and just be part of this amazing community that is MLE. We all love it. We're all trying to be a part of this together and just build. We saw a lot of that at Worlds where we had so many people that we were able to meet and con conversate with and just have an amazing time. And it felt really good to be there as a community. I love this community. Love what we have going. It's just an amazing time all around, no matter what happens. I'd so, follow. I can't what you posted in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as 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 we're kind of coming down off of the unexpected roster changes and everything, uh, like we were talking about, we are going into a bye week. So just really quickly before we get on uh, with the rest of the show, I just kind of want to give everybody a little bit of a look see at where we're looking at across the leagues in terms of playoff standings as of right now. Um, so in Premier League. Uh, in doubles, the three teams that we've got on top in the Orange Conference are going to be the Rhinos at 14 and 6, the Flames at 12 and 8, and the Demolition at 8 and 12, um, which obviously not a lot of teams in Premier League, uh, so you can see a little bit more um, movement and, and a little bit more flexibility in the in the records uh, as we go for there. Uh, over on the Blue Conference side of things, still in doubles, uh, we're going to see the Hive at 16 and 4, Ducks at 11 and 9 and Blizzard at 11 and 9. Uh, so there's not a graphics card for the standings overview because this was not something that was planned. This is me doing things off the top because this is how I like to do things. So um, just if you're interested, write things down with a note and pen. Uh, <laughs> moving over to standard in Premier, again, back in the Orange Conference, Rhinos again on top. So Rhinos kind of, uh, you know, doing a good job being on top in doubles and standard. Uh, first place in standard with 14 and six. Uh, Shadow in second with 13 and seven. Flames in third with eight and 12. Uh, on the blue conference side, Hive again, 14 and six. Blizzard 13 and seven. Spartans 11 and nine. Very quick move on to uh, Mash League. I'm going to try and rapid fire this a little bit. Uh, doubles orange conference. We got wizards in first and doubles for ML at 16 and four flames, 14 and six tyrants, 16 and four outlaws, 11 and nine. Uh, the fifth, sixth and seventh slot are going to be your, uh, wild cards because master league, uh, CL, AL and FL, uh, have things a little differently, um, because they've got more people. So it's going to be your division leaders and then three wild cards. Uh, so the fifth, sixth, and seventh in doubles and orange are going to be uh, Dodgers at fifth at fifteen and five, uh, Shadow in sixth at twelve and eight, and then the Bears in seventh with the even ten and ten. Over on the Blue Conference side of things, still in doubles, uh, first place is going to be the Knights at fourteen and six, Lightning in second with fourteen and six, Wolves in third at fourteen and six. Very consistent there from you guys. Very well done. Uh, <laughs> This is just current standings, by the way. This isn't like this isn't how things are going to be set. Obviously, it's just where things are. Uh, fourth place being the Ducks at uh, thirteen and seven. Uh, fifth, the Hawks, twelve and eight. Sixth, the Blizzard, eleven and nine. Seventh, the Spartans again at ten and ten. With the Aviators also at ten and ten, just barely on the brink there. Uh, so the Aviators having a chance in the next couple of weeks to kind of move in. Over on the standard side of things, uh, back in the Orange Conference, my Tyrants. In ML, first place with 14 and six, second place, Comets 14 and six, third place, Pandas 14 and six, fourth place, Bears 13 and seven, fifth place, Bulls 14 and six, sixth place, Spectre 13 and seven, seventh place, Shadow 11 and nine. Now, for those of you who are doing math, yes, the Bulls do have a better record than the Bears, but they're in fifth because the Tyrants technically have. Uh, first place of the volcanic division, which is putting them in first overall, drops the Bears down into that playoff or excuse me, play in area. Um, so that's why the Bulls are in fifth and the Bears are in fourth. Uh, over on the blue conference side of things, we've got the Sabres in first at 17 and three. That's a record and a half. Uh, in second, we've got the Ducks at 10 and five, Blizzard at 13 and seven, Knights at 12 and eight. Fifth, we've got the Wolves at 14 and six. Six, we've got the Lightning at 12 and 8. Seventh, we've got the Jets at 11 and 9. Moving on into CL. Orange Conference, we've got the Pirates in first in doubles at 16 and 4. Shadow, 13 and 7 in second. Third, Dodgers, 12 and 8. Fourth, Comets, 12 and 8. Fifth, Pandas, 13 and 7. Sixth, Wizards, 
12 and 8, 7th Bears 11 and 9 with a couple of 10 and 10 teams in the demolition and the Spectre right on the edge there. Over on the blue conference side, we've got the Jets in first at 14 and 6, second Blizzard 13 and 7, third Foxes 13 and 7, fourth Ducks 12 and 8, fifth Lightning 12 and 8, sixth Sabres 11 and 9. Seventh Hurricanes, 11 and 9, with the Express also at 11 and 9, again, just on the edge there. Over in Standard on the con- er, over in Standard on the Orange Conference, we've got the Elite in first at 11 and 4. Uh, the Bears in second at 14 and 6. Demolition at third, 13 and 7. Fourth, we've got the Shadow at 13 and 7. Fifth, we've got the Outlaws at 12 and 8. Sixth, we've got the Comets at 11 and 8. Seventh, we've got the Wizards at 10 and 10. Now, we do have the Flames at 10 and 9, and the Rhinos also at 10 and 10, just on the outskirts of that as well. So, again, as we're starting to get towards the midway point in the season, going to be seeing a lot of those teams really fighting for those last couple playing spots. Uh, on the Blue Conference side of things, I've got the Hive in first at 16 and 4. Second, I've got the Express at 16 and 4. Third, Blizzard 15 and 5. Fourth, Foxes 14 and 6. Fifth, Hurricanes 11 and 9. Sixth, Puffins 11 and 9. S- uh, seventh, Lightning 10 and 10, with the Sabres also at 10 and 10, right on the cusp there. Moving into ACAD on the Orange Conference side in doubles, we're going to have the Wizards in first with 14 and 6. Let's go. Uh, on, the, on the double side of things. So, Wizards. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> second place, we've got the Outlaws at 13 and 7. Uh, third, we've got the Sharks at 11 and 9. Fourth, we've got the Dodgers at 11 and 9. Fifth, we've got the Demolition at 12 and 8. Sixth, Rhinos at 11 and 9. And seventh, Pirates at 11 and 9. Uh, as we are moving on, we also have the Shadow at 11 and 9 there as well, just kind of barely on the outskirts. Uh, and that's a lot of sun division teams in, in, uh, in doubles. So, uh, don't worry guys. Uh, I'm not going to be going over every single team. I will have Schnaz taking over for FL as soon as I finish this up going into blue conference. I'm going to have the ducks at 15 and five second, the eclipse at 14 and six foxes at third with 14 and six, uh, fourth express 11 and nine hurricanes, fifth, 12 and eight, sixth blizzard, 12 and eight, seventh, Puffins 11 and 9 with Knights, Hive, and Sabres at 10 and 10 just behind. Orange Conference Standard, we're going to have <clears throat> the Tyrants in first place with 15 <laughs> and 5 uh, on the standard side of things. Second place, we've got the Sharks at 13 and 7. Third, we've got the Pirates at 13 and 7. Fourth, we've got the Demolition at 12 and 8. Fifth place for Orange Conference Trios, we've got the Bears at 12 and 8. Sixth, we've got the Shadow at 11 and 9. Seventh, we've got the Outlaws at 10 and 10 with the Spectre at 11 and 9, the Bulls at 10 and 10, the Dodgers at 10 and 10, and the Pandas at 10 and 10, all in contention for those last couple play in spots. On the Blue Conference side of things, first place, you've got the Foxes at 14 and 6. Second, Blizzard 14 and 6. Third, Hawks 12 and 8. Fourth, Express 11 and 9. Fifth, Hurricanes 12 and 8. Sixth, Aviators 11 and 9. Seventh, Eclipse. 11 and 9 with the Jets, Spartans, Wolves, Puffins, and Ducks all at 10 and 10 again, just on the outskirts of that. And that will move us right along to Foundation League if Schnaz would like to take over. Of course. So in doubles, we got first up Rhinos 16 and 4, Elite second at 13 and 7, Bears third at 15 and 5, Outlaws fourth at 11 and 9, Tyrants and Dodgers following close behind, both at 9 and 11. For Blue Conference, we got the Hurricanes up first with 16 and 4 record. Express in second, 13 and 7. Spartans in third, 12 and 8. Eclipse in fourth, 11 and 9. Blizzard at fifth at 10 and 10. Standard Orange Conference, we got Outlaws at 16 and 4. A lot of 16 and 4 is mm-hmm. Tyrants at second, 13 and 7. A lot of those as well. That's what, three in a row? Mm hmm. Rhinos at third, 12 and 8. Bulls at fourth at 10 and 10, followed closely behind by the Elite and Dodgers, both at 9 and 11. For Blue Conference Standard, we have the Spartans at 13 and 7, make that four. Eclipse at 12 and 8 at second. Third, Lightning at 12 and 8 as well. Hurricanes in fourth at 11 and 9, followed by the Knights and the Jets, also at 9 and 11. So a lot of really close, you know series a lot of really close records a lot of people fighting for those top spots in the divisions 
Notorious got anything to add? Well, uh, it's still early in the season. You know, a lot of teams can make a lot of changes going on. We're probably going to see some roster changes this week over the bye week. So how do teams handle this bye week is going to be the big thing. The last one was Worlds. It's still early in the season, but I've noticed a change since then in some of the teams. So where do teams take this bye week? Do they use it to their advantage, practice more, scrim more, get more out of it? Or do they take it off and just not really do much? I understand holidays, spend it with your family, have a great time. But in your free days, how are people going to be using this? Are they going to be making those roster moves? Are they going to be doing those practices? What is going to happen? And where are we going to come out next week for the matches? I'm ready to see it. I want to see what happens. I want to see some crazy things happen. Give us more to talk about. You know, I definitely want to see some juicy things, some things we never would have expected. Who knows what could happen? And we have new people come into the league every day. So everything can change every day. Every week's a new week. And until we get to that point in week nine that the rosters lock, everything can change still. These standings still have so much flexibility. These teams that are up at the top that you were talking about, 16 and four, they still got multiple weeks to get 5 would And it, true. we've seen it happen. So it can happen. There's been top teams that just go out in a series and get destroyed that you never would have expected. A couple of weeks ago, I know on the broadcast, we had some teams we thought were going to 5 They got 5 would or they got 4-1. So it's just a matter of what teams do from here. How does their management control what they're doing? And are they getting them in scrims and practices? Yeah, and, and like, like I was saying, as I started going into that, you know, obviously that's just the standings as they are right now. Um, things definitely have a ton of room to change, uh, and that's why I wanted to bring it up going into a bye week because it's like, hey, MLE, just so you know, here's where you stand. You have a bye week. Maybe, you know, let's see what, let's, let's see what we can do to mess around with that. So uh, as we move on, we are going to be kicking over to a fan favorite topic part of Open Net, which is going to be guess the salary we should probably try and figure out a jingle for this at some point um just because i feel like it'd be fun but uh for those of you who haven't done this before or haven't participated in this before uh we're going to be showing various different clips i believe the amount of clips that we have is four um and it's basically just going to be four clips from i think it's scrims or stream games or something i forget where they grabbed it where they grab them from uh but you have to guess the salary Right, so you just kind of based off of how it's looking, how it lo everything looks going on on screen. Figure out the salary of the player that you're watching. I know this was entertaining last time when we got a fifteen five that did not look like a fifteen five. Anyways, <laughs> got the notepad, um, got the pen. Let's get it. Yep. So let's go ahead and get right into the first clip. I believe. I'm seeing the bunny topper already the best topper in the game i'm liking that not a bad kickoff okay good placement on that shot that'd be a little off great Close save, save. On that. Good reaction wow. time. rotates near side okay mm -hmm. behind his teammate good rotation so far so good Decent pass mm. middle, a little bit fast, a little bit fast. This this looks like a cat to me. I'd have to agree. This looks like a cat. That looks like a cat to me. So I hmm. We've got some good guesses already going on in chat, but I'm gonna let you guys. Schnaz and notorious. What do, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on that? We got we got a lot of sevens in chat, some nines, some eights. I see a six, eleven, five. That's honestly eleven five is probably what I was gonna guess. I'm I'm gonna say eleven though. Eleven, I think, is probably probably where it's at. Okay, okay. Yeah, my uh my feet actually didn't start for a minute, so I missed the start of it there. But from what I saw, I'm gonna put this at an I'm gonna say a nine. I'm going to say a nine just based off of 
the flip style I saw compared to what I've seen a lot from 11s and ACAD and what I've seen from nines and eight and halves this week, just playing with them from what I've seen, how they flip, how they control their car, how they're going for passes. I'm going to put this as a nine. Notorious is going with a nine. Schnaz is going with, what'd you say, 11 five? I said 11. Let's 11. Go with an 11. Yep. 11. Okay. So I probably would have gone low ACAD with this. Probably would have said about a 10 five. Uh, but I do know the salary, so I'm not making a guess on it. <laughs> uh, that was an eight and a half. Ah, uh, I was that close. was an eight five. So notorious, so very, very close. Because uh, you you were saying, oh, this looks like a an, an eight uh, a nine or an eight five, and I was like, please say eight five, please say eight five. <laughs> and you stuck with nine. So yeah, for those of you in chat, that was an eight five, and I agree with some of the comments the chat is making. Uh, it looked like a cad, but it did look very slow. Yeah. So it's it, there. There was definitely a speed difference that kind of gives you that that change between FL and al right it's it's like they look the same but al is a lot faster um so moving on we have another clip raring to go all right no topper this time so clear this is pl good speed, speed flip kickoff. Speed already flip and the oh, okay my. yeah this is already definitely a higher league <laughs> with that reaction time getting the car upside down and it's getting PL. the touch into the net yeah that's gotta be pl you got a speed flip off the kickoff, going to the corner as well. Ooh. Nice flick, but a nice save coming out of his teammate too. This might be this might be high ML. Yeah, I don't I'll have to give this a second here and see. I've seen the speed flips coming out. It's good movement. Yeah. Notorious, don't you really think it may be seal? No, I think this is definitely higher than CL. Just based on the speed of play from everyone on the field, not just this player alone. Okay. Um, how everyone's rotating, moving around from what I can see. And, I mean, you're not seeing a lot of missed rotations out of this. Some great touches and great plays. I'm thinking this is ML. I'm thinking either high ML or low PL. I have to agree with you on that one. So I appreciate the league guesses, but this is not guess the league. This is guess the salary. I need Fair to hear enough. some numbers, gentlemen. Fair enough. Well, I'll let you take mm. this one first, Nas. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to agree with chat. Let's go with a 16 and a half. 16 and a half, chat. On that. Uh, hmm. This is a tough one. This is a really tough one. You know, I not too familiar with a lot of players in these leagues have only gotten to catch a couple of their games i'm gonna go 17 5. i'm gonna go 17 Ooh. 5 on this one did he okay. hit the nail okay so schnaz is saying 16 and a half notorious is saying 17 and a half chats like in that 16 ish range so you had the league right it was ml okay that's a 15 5. Oh wow! I got that a long is a way to very, go. That is a very, very <laughs> speedy fifteen five. I will say Definitely. that because I have seen fifteen fives, and that is just a very speedy fifteen five. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm looking to get up to ML, I got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I would, I wouldn't say that. Like I said, he he had a lot of speed. There were definitely some some not so great about certain things there, but. Lots of speed, uh, so that's kind of where we're going to roll into that. So uh, we will go ahead, for those of you that missed it again, that was a 15-5. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and roll it into the third clip that we have up. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Well, Snods were tied up, so you got to get it on here. Oh, God, we're back to the top. What is that? Yeah, this is this this has got it. I, I don't even. That what hurts. is that? Still hits the aerial. No, no aerial used, okay. Doesn't jump and boost Back it out. Flip. That's definitely a big thing for me to notice there. Rotate near side. This this could be FL, but I don't uh, I don't know. Are I FL are FL aerials, players going for? I think for with these aerials. This is definitely. Oh, I want to say this is ACAD here. This is I, I think. This is ACAD. Just based off what I've seen in ACAD, a lot Just of those rotations happen, but. 
a lot more aerials coming out of ACAD than FL. Um, it could be an FL player, but for everyone on the team on the field to be going for aerials, just based on Oddfellow's reaction, I'm thinking it's not FL. <laughs> Oh I my! Like, no, I, 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 it's, it's the call. I, I know, I know. I um, it that caught me off. So, it's got me so off guard. <laughs> Let's see. Here. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Who, whoever, that's, that's... whoever that was, if you if you're in this chat and know who you are, that was a fabulous car design. Never change it. Just keep <laughs> it that way. You, you have to be playing in PL with that someday. Yep. I'm. I'm gonna say that's. Uh, let's go with the ten five. I think that's like a safe guess. See, I was gonna say ten five. I'm, I'm gonna go with ten. I'm gonna put it as a ten, Sal. Just cover that little bit of a low half on you. You got the upper fair. half. I got the lower half. You know, can't can't go the same. We got to split it up here. We're one and one. We're gonna so we got to split up these gonna, guesses. We're gonna prices right it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fair enough. I, I, the re it. so so when I first saw the car, I I wanted to say, oh my god, this is such an FL design, but I didn't want to because it's actually a Foundation League player. That was an eight. I take it. I'm in off the lead. Again. That player was again. an eight cell. And it, it, again, the car design and like that bar down, like right as Notorious was saying something about A cad players, I was like, dude, seriously, A <laughs> cad hey, players I, don't miss that crossbar. Saw I, uh, you're, yes, they do. I can tell you from experience <laughs> that ACAD players hit the crossbar, they hit the woodwork, they hit them all. I've had it happen to myself, I've had it happen to a lot of teammates. It, you just have unlucky days, but from the aerials, there is what really pushed me a little bit lower than ACAD. Mm -hmm. Um, I figured it was either really low ACAD or below ACAD just because their aerials were a lot slower, they weren't getting powerful touches off of the aerials so that's what put me down a little bit lower gotcha all right well we're gonna move it along to the fourth and final clip for guess the salary let's see what we got on deck much better car design i like this a lot more demo play what's no with all these what's fast with all these aerials phoenix already? Yeah, I'd have to agree. A lot of Phoenix today. Y'all, y'all gotta, y'all pick up the Octane or something. Jeez, best car in the game. Nice whiff. We're gonna see a redirect. Up for a redirect. Oh, close. He went so for it. Knows, that's definitely. Oh, knows how to read it. Doesn't know how to hit it. Yep. Or just maybe wasn't able to react just in the split of time to get over to it because it was pretty quick. It was a real quick bang. But able to it's get out clear. to that and get a good clear downfield, that's that's definitely... For me, this is looking CL right now. No. This is looking very CL to me. I, I, I'd say it's a bit slow for CL, honestly. I, th I think CL play typically is, is a bit faster than this. I Okay, I'm not putting <laughs> this in ACAD. I can't I see know. that being an ACAD play. What are you, what are you thinking, Notorious? Oh, right here. I'm going to go 13-5. I'm going to go 13-5 on that one. Should I agree with you just for the sake of it? You've been getting all no, right. No, no, no. We no, you're <laughs> hey, it's 2-1. I'm up on guesses. You got to you got to keep it off a little bit see if you can tie it up 2-2. Two, two. Bring you it to said, another week. <laughs> you said 13-5. I'll say 13. Oh, you're going to keep it the same league. I see how it is. I see yep. how it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> God, fellow, let's hear it. That was a 13. Like, let's go. <laughs> oh, gosh, I was so close. I'm happy. Finally. I don't even care. I don't even care. That, that was, was a... amazingly close. <laughs> that was very close. Yeah, I love that. I love that Schnaz did the old did the old. Oh, he's guessing 11. I'm going to guess 1099. <laughs> right. Like, like on the, the price is right. There. I had to. I yeah, had, had to. to, had to oh, you couldn't have gone to 12, five. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But uh yeah, but I like I like the comments about how oh, this is too <laughs> I like, I like the, oh, this is too close for, for I like this is oh too oh this is too close for CL. And you're not wrong, 
it's low CL. <laughs> so that would be why it's not, uh, it's not uh, fast enough for CL or whatever, but uh, all right, that is going to do it for this week's edition of guess the salary. Next, we're going to be moving on to the other favorite um, section of open net. And that is going to be your plays of the week brought to you by balls. Garana. We're going to be showing you the best plays that happen on stream during the week. Uh, and then you guys get to vote on who you think gets to have this week's play of the week. So if we're ready for it, I think we're good to go ahead and run the first clip. But unfortunately not able to catch up to it. Zulu, what a pass, but judgmental, not quite able to collect it with an accurate shot on. So we're going to find this back in the left wing corner of the Bears side. Rage gets it past one. The yes, dribbles! Oh, play the week that. Play the oh, week that. That was a fantastic goodness. solo play. He's gone for it like three times in this game. And every single time he's gotten closer and closer to the net until finally the Bears defenses break down. Rage picking them apart. Pretty good. That was That was a great shot by Rage. Great, great cut in with the power slide. Pops it right over his opponent. Perfect fundamental shot, if you ask me. I'm right yeah, there with pretty you. Good, pretty good play. Pretty solid. I mean, just a basic once play around two people. It worked really well for him. Yep. Yeah, so uh, not super flashy or anything, but sometimes you don't need to be flashy to get the job done. So, uh Great shot submitted there by Rage from the Bulls. So let's go ahead and get into the next clip in the line. Zalm does get a touch on it, but oh, a double demo coming out. And that's going to kind of reset the play. But Badloaf face low and gets the goal to tie it up with 11 seconds left. What a wonderful play here. He pops it up. Rob thinks he's going to go for it, but he just comes right back down and sinks it with a beamer. Man, who was that you caster? Know, yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, it may be this handsome that? guy with a mustache, you know. It may be that handsome guy there, but real dapper we'll looking never, fellow. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll never really know. You know, he just has this killer mustache, and I just can't get enough of him. But yeah, that was that was probably my favorite play of the week right there. Just the amazing pop up in there. He fakes going for the aerial, gets past all three defenders. So that one there. Amazing play. All of these are amazing plays, but nonetheless, I love that play there. Just a great little fake to get it back down and get just the, enough speed on it to get past the last defender. I'd, I'd have to agree with you. It's a pretty great mind game that is going to work a lot uh, for anyone really lower than C2, C3, maybe GC1. It's, it's really effective. It's a really good way of opening up the net as well as trying to get that first opponent out of the way. I was about to say, what league was that? I believe that was ACAD. Yeah, that definitely was a that, that was definitely a good ACAD fake. So excellent shot there. Good casting by this dude down there, down here. That one. <laughs> that one right there. I had to figure out where I was pointing. Anyways, gonna go ahead and move on to the next clip in the line. Any day trying to drop down the Hame game. Ball still in the air. Bisk has a chance to get the golden goal here, but no. Does go off the backboard. Kept alive here by the shadow. Rainy day in the corner. Jordan opting to just try and drop that one down to the ground, but Hayne Day keeps it alive. Hold space up in the air. Rainy day downfield looking for the no. shot. Rainy day gets it. The zero second goal for overtime. Wow. Biscuit with just, just went forward when he needed to stay back and all the shadow needed to do with a quick little passing play. And I got to say know. that looked like a pretty nice pass with a really nice redirect to the top shelf. And not only that, zero second play. It was zero seconds. They kept it up, tied it up, 1-1 one, one to go into overtime. So a great under pressure last second play. You got to get it done. You have no time to let the ball touch, take control. Got to sink the shot. So a wonderful redirect to get it into the net. Wonderful pass to get it upfield. Just all around a really good play. That's that's the time to really get for it. You know, it's the zero seconds. You one goal away from overtime. A shot like that is perfect. It kills all the opponent's momentum. Now you have all the momentum on your side coming into the overtime. 
Yeah, it, it really that was a fun play to to cast over. Um, it, it really kind of just encompassed how the whole rest of that game went. Uh, would have been nice if they actually won the game, but they ended up getting scored on 17 seconds into that overtime. So, anyways, moving right along, we're going to be looking at our third clip in the line. <laughs> Just want to get past that real quick. Oh, touch from them as well is going to put it in a good spot, but that challenge definitely in favor of the high. Up goes Poisson. Poisson plays it out for Jimmy G. What a pass. What a shot. The high out to a 3 nothing lead. Yeah, we see good rotations there from the Wolves, but uh, with a shot that's coming in that quickly, the amount of rotations isn't going to matter your reaction time. I love Poisson. Agreed. Poisson's one of those. That was, that was such a good pass. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing pass, amazing placement on that too. It's, that's a crazy angle from coming from Jimmy G. Yeah, that was right out of the corner there. That's just a you don't have any margin of error there. You hit it one way, you're going off the post. You hit it the other way, you're maybe getting a pass across mid, but still just a nutty angle to finish it in. That was CL, right? Like puts was Poussons up in CL now, or is that high ACAD? I can't remember. I believe Poussons up in CL now. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Yeah. I think he's around a 14, 14, 5, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, that was definitely good for um that was definitely a fabulous angle there coming out. So that was the last clip. Poll is up. Chat, it is your time to decide who you believe had this week's play of the week. Schnaz and Notorious. Which clip do you think won that? Uh, I got to go with that last one with Poisson and Jimmy G. Just for the accuracy of the pass and the difficulty of the angle on the shot. Okay, okay. I'm going to go... Personally, not because I cast it over it, but with Bad Love mm. Shot, just mm. for the ingenuity of it, it was a solo play. He got past all three. Play of the week, we see a lot of pass plays. They're great plays, don't get me wrong. But for me, the solo play past all three of the opposing team, that just takes it for me. It was a wonderful play at a league. You don't see a lot of that, so it was really good to see. Yeah, um, man, I don't want to. I don't want to do the same thing Notorious is doing and basically say the clip I cast it over. But I, I really think that Rainy Days clip ends up being the the one here because it's the zero second for overtime, and that ball was up a long time. Yes, there were a lot of opportunities for for that to hit the ground, and it didn't. Um, and then they get that dime pass with fabulous placement on the shot, you know obviously ends up being exactly like an RLCS Justin moment where he gets, you know, the super banger goal and then it ends up amounting to nothing because they lose anyways. Right. Um, <laughs> but that, you know, sometimes that just is the way she blows, you know, like that's how rocket league is. It's the definition of this is rocket league, you know? Um, so we are going to be waiting for that timer to tick down chat. Make sure y'all are getting your votes in. Whoever Sick ends up winning play of the week, I believe, yeah, uh, ends up winning a case of Balls Garana. Yeah. Sweet. So good luck. It's looking, like, it's looking like Jimmy G and Poisson are up ahead with eight votes, followed by Rainy Day at five. Yep. Get those votes and let's see who gets that case of balls. Oh. Now, while we're Dude. waiting on that to come down, do y'all have any hot takes from this week? Just anything altogether y'all didn't expect to happen? I don't know about uh, hot takes, but I will I will give you this. Wizards go 5-0 every league, every both twos and threes. <laughs> Cross AL, ML, and, and uh, NCL. Okay, okay. I mean, on a bye week, it's going to be a little hard, but it looks like we got our one. No, nah, yeah, yeah. For Hot week six. Solo? I'm sorry, week five. Um... Honestly, not really. I mean, I, I haven't seen anything that's blown me away or anything. Uh, obviously, lots of player movement and and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, nothing's blown me away just yet. We're still pretty early. I don't even think we're at the halfway point. We're barely not at the half point, halfway point in the season yet. So there's still a long way to go. But 
Voting has concluded. We do have a winner for play of the week, and that is going to be the fabulous passing play between Jimmy G and Poisson. So congratulations, guys, for winning this week's play of the week. Definitely well-deserved. Um, as we were talking about, it was a fantastic pass, great placement, all that kind of good stuff. So you'll love to see it. Uh, congratulations to those guys for winning play of the week. So with that, that moves us along to our zero second play guys. Do you have any parting thoughts as we get ready to conclude for the evening? Notorious. You want to go first? Yeah. I mean, it's been wonderful to be here with y'all. Appreciate everyone tuning into the stream and we've had a wonderful night here. I love being able to chat with you guys, get some interesting info, see some crazy shots, some crazy plays, just really get to vibe and have a good time with the community and get to learn a little bit of stuff that I may not have known before. So it's just been a great time. I really appreciate y'all having me here. It's awesome having you, brother. Um, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about OpenNet is we get to have a lot of different people come out and kind of show their faces for the first time and that kind of thing. So um i definitely think it's been a lot of fun definitely think we had a good week had a lot to talk about um obviously like we said going into a bye week so it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of moves and changes and shakeups happen over the course of this week going into next week as we get ready to go into what'll be week six match five yeah um after the bye week so um i think that is gonna go ahead and do it thank all of you for coming out tonight big shout outs to isaiah for pushing buttons behind the scenes uh fresh mcfarland for getting things all set and running and rolling as always uh, we've got ice cold brew helping you know set up topics and all that kind of stuff for us um you know obviously huge shout out to the two gentlemen on screen with me here schnoz and notorious really appreciate you guys coming out it's been a lot of fun talking to you guys chat as always it's been something seeing seeing all of your lovely faces in chat um I, i'm not sure what it is but it's been something but thank you all of you for coming out we will be live again next week same time same place mle open net hope you all have a great rest of your week